Welcome to this screencast on what's new in C-Line 2016.2. The debugger comes with support for remote debugging now. Here you can see that I have a virtual box with Ubuntu running, and I'm going to start the GDB server on localhost port 8080 and have this calendar application run. So we can now see that this is listening on port 8080. Let's switch back over to C-Lion. On C-Line, I'm now going to go and edit configurations. And I've got a new one set up for remote debugging, where I've selected the GDB command line, the actual TCP and the IP address and the port number, the symbol file, and then a mapping from my remote host, which in this case would be home Hadi OS X Canada, to my local files. I can now click OK, and let's go ahead and run the debugger where I've set a breakpoint. So we'll go ahead and do remote GDB. And we can see that now the debugger is connected to TCP 192.168.148.8080. And we see the debugger information over here. Let's switch over to our Ubuntu where we can input some values. We're now on Ubuntu and we can enter some information. So for instance, let's go ahead and select uh, year 16, month, four and day 12. And we can see that it switches back to our debugger where we can actually examine the information that's just come in. And we can step through and we can set other breakpoints as well as resume execution until that point, etc. In addition to remote debugging, the new version of the debugger comes with updates for GDB and NLDB. And as you can see on the screen, we have had also major improvements. Our tests have shown quite significant improvements in many different areas, providing you a more pleasant experience during debugging. C-Line comes with Doxygen support. To begin with, we can see inline documentation. If there are several comments, it will merge them all into a single window. If we click on a parameter, we can see the parameter also highlighted under the documentation. We can even rename these, and it will rename it in the comments for that documentation. So for instance, here I want to rename this to year, and we can see that it renames it. If I want to create new documentation, I can simply start typing, and C-Line will give me completion information with the actual parameters, etc. And of course, I can simply just hit three dashes, and it will generate the comments for me with all of the parameters filled in. We can even specify what we'd like in terms of code styles. Under code generation, we can say whether we want documentation comments to have the brief tag, whether we want the tag prefix to start with the slash or with the ampersand, etc. When it comes to code generation, C-Lion now also brings new features. We can now generate equality operators, relational operators, and stream output operators. Selecting one, we can select the actual fields we want to use and whether we want them as class members using the standard TI implementation or generate in place. If we hit enter, it will actually search for existing operators and tell us whether we want to replace them or add the missing ones. We can show the existing ones and from there say, OK, now we're good to add the missing ones. Complete statement is also now available on this version. So let's say that I write a class here. I can simply press shift command enter and that will complete the statement for me. So you can see that it enters the curly braces, the closed curly braces, and the semicolon. And of course, this works in many scenarios. So for instance, here I want to create an if statement, and I can again press Shift Command Enter and have the statement kind of completed for me. This release also adds new functionality in terms of refactoring with CMake. You can now rename user symbols such as functions and macros, and we also have the ability of safe delete for files. C-Line has always suggested updating the CMake targets when new files are created. Now we bring the same functionality when deleting files. Get CMake commands automatically update when deleting files from your project. C-Line will either delete the reference from the command line argument silently, or warn you about a possible incorrect command after deletion. This can happen, for instance, when it's the last argument for the CMake command. You can, of course, view the usages and decide if you still want to proceed. A few new code style settings have also been put in place. You can now define what you want to happen in terms of style after function return types, if you want to wrap long lines or not. 
There's also the ability to define styles for Lambda capture lists, as well as operators. You can also select from a set of predefined styles, namely we've had now added LLVM and LLDB. Font ligatures are also available now on the platform. If we go to settings and select fonts, we can then create a new setting which is called ligatures. And here we'll select a font that supports ligatures, in our case Fira code and then select enable font ligatures. And as soon as we do this, we can see that now we have font ligatures available to us. The platform allows us to set background image. We can simply look up the action set background image, select it, select a file, or select from one that was previously picked, and then define the opacity as well as other settings. Hit OK, and now we can see the background on the canvas. Other improvements in this release include alphabetical sorting in structure view. With VCS improvements, we've made working with patches much easier, as well as adding support for case-only renames in Git for both Windows and Mac OS. In this version, there is also the bundled edition of the JDK, which is supported by JetBrains. And last but not least, the Swift plugin for C-Line adds Swift 2.2 support, introduce variable refactoring, and parameter placeholders for Swift.